This afternoon, we're looking deeper into media coverage of missing people, specifically why some missing persons cases tend to get more media attention than others. News Center 7's Brandon Lewis talked to local families and an organization that hopes no missing or trafficked person falls between the cracks. People have been searching for him. 14-year-old Madison Thompson has been missing since Sunday. She disappeared two days after Christmas. He has now been missing for more than 60 hours. But if you knew Nikki, that smile. That smile, you got that smile all the time. It's been more than 20 years since Marilyn Renee Nikki McCown went missing. She was last seen at a Richmond, Indiana laundromat in July 2001. I've been broken so many times in this 22 years, but what's kept me to keep going outside of my kids and family, it's been Nikki. I'm determined to find out where my sister is who's involved in her disappearance, and what happened. Now her family is making sure that no one forgets her name. When Nikki disappeared, Michelle said local media coverage helped, but national news outlets did not pick up Nikki's story. You would love your, your missing person case to go nationally because you don't know where they are. They could be anywhere. Michelle is the outreach coordinator for the Doc Ellis Foundation, which wants to empower minority communities by bringing home missing people. She said the foundation just felt different from the moment they reached out to her. It was someone that looked like me, so I felt like it was someone that understood what I was feeling because I was feeling so defeated because my sister is a person of color. Um, it seemed like nobody was listening to us. According to the Black and Missing Foundation, nearly 40% of missing Americans are people of color and adds there's unequal media coverage when it comes to missing white people versus minorities. The foundation thinks the disparity in coverage could be because missing minority adults are sometimes associated with criminal involvement and missing minority children are often classified as runaways. The media can work better at helping push a positive story. There's often times that you will see somebody reported missing and it's, you know, mother reports son missing, mother believes that, that son is missing, and then a day later, here comes their criminal record. Jasmine and Hajordis Ellis are the co-founders of the Doc Ellis Foundation. Everyone deserves the same exact type of attention. For months, News Center 7 has reported on Sierra Chapman's disappearance. She was last seen at a Trotwood apartment two days after Christmas last year. And it's just the not knowing. That's, it, it's very mine. It has you racing. It, get, it gets you in a panic, a high anxiety. As the search for Sierra continues, her family and friends have appreciated the local media coverage. They kept the story alive. They kept people informed on what was going on. And we want to keep that. We, we don't want it to die down. The same goes for Michelle. She understands not every missing person will have their story on the news, but she suggests news stations show missing person flyers at the end of their newscasts. I think that would make a big difference. Um, I think that that would bring the gap between the community, missing person community, and especially the minority community. So for this to happen to her, whatever has happened to her, I don't understand. Brandon Lewis reporting, the Doc Ellis Foundation says Ohio ranks 11th in the country for the number of missing persons. If you have any information on Nikki McCown or Sierra Chapman, we have numbers on our website that you can call.